We will be discussing issue 17, Does School Violence Warrant a Zero Tolerance Policy? From the perspective of the late Albert Schenker, in his article, Restoring the Connection Between Behavior and Consequences. Albert Schenker's response to this issue is yes, schools do need to warrant a zero tolerance policy. This zero tolerance policy will be based on a code of conduct. What the code of conduct will include will be a fair and equal punishment, as well as a clear connection between behavior and consequence. As an outcome, it will create a balanced standard for all students. What the code of conduct will not include is a tolerance of disruption, violence, as well as threats of violence, because these acts severely deprive students of the opportunity to learn. With saying that, schools need to have this code of conduct to provide both a balanced balance standard for all students as well as an opportunity to learn, which both teach the students responsibility, accountability, as well as conscientiousness, all being characteristics of a capable adult. I will be presenting a V-diagram of Albert Shanker's article, Restoring the Connection Between Behavior and Consequences, which concerns an assessment of zero tolerance policies for school violence. Our focus question comes from issue 17 of James Knowles' Taking Sides. Does school violence warrant a zero tolerance policy? Our concepts are zero tolerance policy for school violence, code of conduct, fair and equal punishment, connection between behavior and consequence, disruption, violence, threats of violence, the opportunity to learn, responsibility, accountability, conscientiousness, and capable adults. We have three principles. Our first principle is that a school with a code of conduct that does not tolerate disruption, violence, or threats of violence gives students a greater opportunity to learn, which increases their opportunities of future in schooling and employment. Our second principle is that zero tolerance teaches individuals that they are responsible for their actions and that every action has a consequence. Our final principle is that zero tolerance creates a fair and balanced standard for all students and eliminates both favoritism and prejudice. Our theory is that if schools adopt a zero tolerance policy regarding any and all forms of violence, they will be more equipped to fulfill their fundamental purpose, which is student academic achievement. Um, we also have records which are in place to enforce the principles as quoted from Albert Shanker in his article. Um, the first record from Shanker says that what is the number one problem? It is the problem of violence and order in schools. Shanker also writes, we currently have a system that is willing to sacrifice the overwhelming majority of children for a handful. Shanker also writes, when we sit back and tolerate certain types of behavior, we are teaching youngsters that certain types of behavior are acceptable. You deprive students of an opportunity to learn if you do not first provide a safe and orderly situation in school. You have to have schools that are safe in classrooms where there is sufficient order so that the curriculum means something. And the last record from Shanker says that we need to have discipline codes. We need to have a new legal system. We need to have one standard for all students. We have two claims. We have a knowledge claim and a value claim. Our knowledge claim states that a zero tolerance policy for school violence based on Shanker's code of conduct will offer students freedom from distraction, favoritism, and prejudice. Our value claim says that our zero tolerance policy for school violence gives students the opportunity to learn that they deserve. This opportunity to learn directly affects the student's chances of future successes. In conclusion, Albert Shanker believes that it is the school's responsibility to draw strict lines regarding school violence and that, schools, and that students should be taught to obey these boundaries to avoid both punishment as well as a cheapened educational experience. Good enough, I guess. I agree with the fact that schools need to have a strict method on dealing with behavior issues in school, and this partially comes from having a personal connection with the issue, because the two high schools I attended were pretty high in violence and disruption. While attending these high schools, I have been a witness to both a stabbing and a campus full of police, and undercover police, due to a gang shooting threat, and many other ridiculous shenanigans. So the zero tolerance policy seems like a pretty good idea. However, the zero tolerance policy comes with both positive and negative aspects. Zero tolerance promotes both a positive change in school security, reinstating its safety, as well as a transformation in student behavior, and brings schools back to their initial obligation, 
that is to teach and to learn. But with recent major events of violence in school, such as the Columbine shooting, schools have been taking the zero tolerance policy over the top and have made opponents that speak out about its lack of logic and how it is detrimental to the student's education, which contradicts the reason for establishing a zero tolerance policy in the first place. One sixth grader was suspended for bringing a Tweety Bird keychain to school because it was considered to be a weapon. Also, a six-year-old was suspended for possessing organic lemon drops that were considered to be a banned drug according to his school's zero tolerance policy. One 11-year-old died of asthma because of his school's zero tolerance policy prevented him from bringing his inhaler to school. The evidence of the irrational punishments is there. So turning to Shanker's article, I believe that there should be a code of conduct for schools so that students can expect punishment for their disruptions, so that more serious acts of violence are prevented, but no policy should ever be detrimental to a student that their health is put at risk in order to maintain the policy zero tolerance. I agree with the fundamental purpose of a zero tolerance policy that is teaching students accountability and responsibility. I think that far too many schools excuse bad behavior, writing it off as kids being kids, or just a phase that everyone has to go through. I believe that there is no excuse for violence in schools, and placing the blame anywhere but directly on the shoulders of the students involved is ridiculous and irresponsible on the school's behalf. The zero tolerance policy also guarantees safety for students. I believe that safety is a huge deal for students, far more than I think most people realize. Violence was never a problem in my high school. I never had to worry about getting jumped or having my stuff stolen, which meant that I could focus all my attention on my education. A zero tolerance policy ensures that fears of violence will never interfere with students' main goal of education. However, while zero tolerance is a good solution in theory, evidence shows that the way it actually plays out in school is incredibly careless. Schools have enforced this policy by creating one standard of punishment for all students. As Anna pointed out, schools with zero tolerance policies handing down punishments much more severe than any rational person would claim. The inflexibility of zero tolerance policy is its biggest downfall. There should exist a balance between holding students accountable for their actions and maintaining common sense. There are so many factors that should be considered when administering punishment to a student. The context of the situation, the disciplinary history, their academic history, their age and gender appropriateness, etc. A zero tolerance policy focuses only on the event, using this sort of tunnel vision for punishment that has no place in a classroom. Ideally, the zero tolerance policy succeeds in creating a safer and more responsible student body, but its actual application has proven to be much more detrimental than I think Shanker intended. Students must be analyzed individually, not collectively. A student who has been on the Dean's List her entire life and has never gotten in trouble should not be viewed in the same judicial light as a student who is a, proven de who is a proven delinquent and a cancer to his classroom. Zero tolerance policies are inherently designed to be rigid and absolute, which does work in some cases, but this is definitely not one of them. 